Uh, my name is Phil Flanagan, and I serve on the program committee as, or the Rethinking Racism Committee as liaison to the YWCA. Um, and I want to invite you all to join us in a brief um, but optional centering activity. Um, so you may start by sitting up straight, as straight as you can in your seat. If possible, plant your feet flat on the floor while seated. Then either close your eyes or find a point to focus on. Now I want you to think about something that you are grateful for. When you have your thought, breathe it in deep. So take in a deep breath and then hold for a pause and expel out your breath like you're expelling out gratitude. And then I want you to think about a hope that you have for next year. Once you have that thought, I want you to breathe it in deep, hold for a pause and expel out hope into the air. And then I invite you to take one more breath all together in unison, nice and deep and expel. And thank you for joining in the centering activity. Um, I will pass it back to Jesse. Thank you, Phyllis. Um, I'm going to move into um, rep introducing a representative we have with us from Muse tonight. So Charmaine, if you want to introduce yourself and Muse, um, I can go ahead and play the song that we have prepared tonight um, once you let me know. Great, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here and for asking Muse to be a part of such an important event. It's great to see some familiar faces and some new faces too. Um, my name is Charmaine Moore Kitsini. I am the Assistant Director for Muse Cincinnati's Women's Choir. And basically Muse works, uh, we've been around for about 38 years and um, we work to create a peace and just full, uh, peaceful and just world through song. Um, our mission, I'm gonna read it. Um, Muse is an inclusive and feminist choral community advocating for peace and social justice. We unite our voices to raise awareness and inspire change in ourselves, our audiences, our world through partnerships that honor the humanity and enduring spirit of all people. Um, we work very hard and with great diligence uh, towards our mission. And um, again, I'm really grateful that we're we were invited to be a part of this of this peaceful moment. So Jesse, I believe you're going to play um, one of our centering songs. We sing this piece of music um, in times of struggle, in times of sorrow, in times where we just need to pull together as a community and, and really focus um, our intention together. It's called I Feel Like Going On and it was written by Issei Maria Barnwell.
After 30 days, so grateful to have Muse in Cincinnati and um, have your words and song and music to keep inspiring us. So, um, before we get into um, our small, I'm sorry, our art activities, um, I think. It would be really nice if we could all introduce each each other to one another really quickly. So we're going to do um, a super short, like one to two minute um, small group discussion. If you could just share with the people in your group your name and one or two thoughts about what makes you feel like going on. So I'm going to break us out really quick. Thanks everyone. I hope you met a new face or got to say hello to an old face. Um, and I know I'm already feeling a little more hopeful just by talking to um, the two new folks that I met in that short conversation. So um, thanks again, Charmaine and Muse uh, for helping us feel like going on when we feel like we just can't. Um, I'm going to pass it off now to Daryl Daniels, who's going to lead us in a visual art activity. Um, Daryl, I'll let you introduce yourself and um, I can give you any like screen capabilities that you need. Just let me know if you need those. Oops, I think you're, I think you're muted. I always forget to unmute myself. <laughs> um, am I a co-host? I okay. okay, great. Um, well, before I share my screen, um, I'll just introduce myself really quickly. Hi, everybody. Um, so nice to see you all this evening. 
Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being here. Um, so I, my name is Daryl. Um, I'm a visual artist. I'm a painter. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. And um, I studied painting at Ohio University. And then I moved to New York and um, I studied, I got my master's in fine arts at uh, the School of Visual Arts. And um, I've recently been back and forth between Cincinnati and New York. Um, I recently did a mural in Cincinnati at, in Lincoln Heights. Um, and we pretty much honored the history of Lincoln Heights. And um, I was recently a part of Black and Brown Faces at the Cincinnati Art Museum. So if you guys happen to get a chance to um, check out the Cincinnati Art Museum, uh, please check out that show. Um, I, I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, so part of my art practice is about self-expression um, through mark making and movement. And so today I thought that it would be great for us to do a mark making activity uh, via analog. And then because we are in a digital age right now, I thought we could also do a digital art activity as well. Um, so the first activity we'll be doing is scratch art. Um, if you guys received an email uh, with a flyer, you might have saw a link to buy some scratch art materials. If not, that's okay. If you have crayons at home or uh, colored pencils or um, just paper, then that works. Uh, the main thing that you would really just want is crayons and paper and we can go from there. Um, so does everyone have those materials? Um, yeah, everyone has those? Okay, great. So, um, I'm so happy that earlier, uh, Phyllis, you talked about um, thinking about something that we're grateful for and something that we're hopeful for. And so I wanna continue thinking about those things as we continue to make our art activity today. And so I want you guys to keep in mind something that you're grateful for, something that you're hopeful for, and something that you might want to do to create positive change in either your life or someone else's life. And so with those things in mind, we can represent those things with color or with marks or with lines. And so if you are doing the scratch art activity um, and you did not purchase um, those materials and you're just working with color pencil or crayons and paper, then the first thing that I would like you to do is just color whatever colors come to your mind on your paper. So it could be something like this. And this is just going to be our background color. And then we're eventually going to draw on top of this with black crayon. And then we're going to mark into it so that we can see some of the background color. I bet if you guys can all see that. All right, so if you guys have crayons and everything, I would just like you to Think about something you're grateful for, think about something you're hopeful for, and think about something that you would like to do to create positive change. And then just start coloring on your piece of paper. All right. And um, I'm gonna play some music for about five minutes while everyone starts coloring. Oh. That's something we're grateful for, something we're hopeful for. And what was the third one? Sorry. Something that you would like to do to create positive change in either your life or someone else's life. And I can put that into the chat. Is this actually, if we have our little black paper already, should we use that? So yeah, if you already have your scratch art paper and you are past the coloring stage, then you can go ahead and start either drawing into your scratch art paper and you should see those colors appear underneath. Oh, thank you, Phyllis. All right. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to just do that.
So if you have your colors already on your paper and you're ready to continue, you can go ahead and with your black crayon, you're just going to color over your colors. And you can make shapes, you can uh, fill the entire page up, it's totally up to you. So for example, over my colors, I just made a black rectangle, a star, and a circle. All right, so if you have those black marks already over your colors, you can either take a toothpick or you can take um, something sharp. If you already have your um, scratch art materials, you'll just start marking in to that black crayon. And you can make squiggly lines, you could write what you're hopeful for or grateful for. Um, it's, it's completely up to you. You guys can be as creative as you want. I'll give you guys like two more minutes.
right, how's everyone doing? You guys need more time or? Um... A little bit? Okay, let's give it like one more minute. All right, does anyone want to share? Or you could just hold it up. If you don't want to talk about it, you could just hold up your work. Nice. Oh, these are beautiful. Awesome. Okay, I see some of you guys are already doing the digital work. Yes. Awesome. I love it. Does anyone want to talk about maybe what they were grateful for or what they might want to do to create positive change? If not, no worries. I can go ahead and move on to the next activity. I was gonna share mine. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So my background should not look blue, I guess, cause it, it's a white background, but um, so the red is, let me go back to the chat. Um, the red represents just life, like the bloodline of just life. I'm very grateful um, to have the opportunity to just, oh, that was somebody's baby. Oh, uh, I'm very grateful to just have the opportunity of life. Um, it's a blessing being alive. And so as long as I have that blood pumping through my body, I'm very grateful and I'm very blessed. Um, hopeful. What I'm hopeful for, in, so this is like a darker brown circle and like a lighter brown circle. Um, well, no, that's, okay, so that's a positive change, plus the little peace sign at the bottom. Um, and I'm just hopeful that there will be some equity and equality um, with my black and brown friends, my black and brown family, um, my black and brown peers. And the yellow just represents sunshine, like the yellow is supposed to be a very happy color. Um, a very bright color and it's just something to look forward to. So this is my masterpiece. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Does anyone else want to go? All right. I can. Okay. So um, can you see that pretty well? Yes. Okay, so the circles, let me see if I can 
get this to the camera in the right spot so you can see what I'm talking about. So down in this corner here, and I don't think I'm pointing at it, down here, it's all backwards with the camera. <laughs> There's two circles representing myself and my husband. And then we saw these lines going out to these other circles representing our children, their significant others, then our grandchildren, and their little hearts at each connection point. And then squiggle lines going out from each circle with hearts at the end, representing how our love then reaches out into the world and makes a positive change. Wow, that was beautiful. Very nice, very nice. Thank you. All right, so um, I dropped in two links into the chat. Um, I know we don't have too much time left, but if you guys click on the first link, it is Quick Draw with Google. And it's really just a quick game. You don't have to play it right now. Um, but I did just want to leave that there for you guys to kind of lead us into the next part of this uh, workshop. But uh, so Quick Draw with Google and Auto Draw are both artificial intelligent machines um, on any device that you can use. And it pretty much just guesses what you are trying to draw. So um, I've worked with some students who may not feel very confident in their artistic skills or who might want something to look like the actual thing that they're representing. And so they might draw a stick figure um, in this device and then it'll come out with a clip art. Um, so if you guys want, you can go ahead and click on um, Quick Draw with Google and you can play to yourself <laughs> or you can um, share with anyone in your family or in your circle. Kids also love this uh, activity. Um, or you can just go ahead and click on autodraw.com right in the chat. I was, I'm having to do Thanksgiving remote from my nephew. From my nephews this week. And so, and there's, turning eight and three. And I have no idea how you can't zoom with a three-year-old, but maybe I can try some of these games. So thank you for suggesting them. Oh yes, yes, no problem. So I will um, try to share my screen with you all. All right, so the way auto draw works is you would click on this, um, this icon, this black icon with the pencil with the stars around it. And you always want to make sure this is highlighted so that the machine is working for you. So um, if you wanted to spread knowledge to the world, uh, you might want to draw a book. So all you will do is with your mouse, you'll try to draw your book. <laughs> and it'll give you all of these icons at the top. And you can pick on which one um, best represents your book or whatever it is you're trying to make. It'll also have other choices for you to choose from. But for most of the time, it usually picks the right um, the right thing. And so you can also change the color by clicking over here where it has different, um, this color swatch, and you can change it to whatever color you'd like. They have skin tones, they have regular tones, and you would just click on that fill button and you can change the color. So it's super easy to use. And if you want to type, you can, and you can move it around. You can also change that color too. And when you want to move things around, you'll click on this select and you'll just move it. And same goes for your book. And you can also change the background color 
to anything you'd like as well. So um, you guys can also uh, maybe take two minutes and put something, choose maybe one thing from that category. So maybe choose the thing that you're grateful for and you can try to draw that out digitally or choose the thing that you want to create change with and you can draw that out digitally. And in order to save this to your device, you'll just click on these three lines over here and you'll just download it. And it'll save directly to your device. You can also like give somebody control remotely. And so you can like decorate the thing at the same time or annotate on top of it. And like, that's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah. So um, I'll give you guys about two minutes to just play around with this one. And um, then we'll go ahead and wrap it up. And you can undo maybe. Yes. All right, how's everybody doing? I know it would be difficult to share um, your screens for your uh, digital work, but if you did the, if you were able to do it on your phone, is anyone working on their phone that they might want to hold up? I thought the drawing game was really fun. <laughs> you tried it? Myself up. I did. <laughs> well, um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's workshop. And um, I hope you guys share these games with your kids because they do really love <laughs> the quick draw. Um, it's been a pleasure. Um, thank you so much for having me. I see. Sir. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You.
I'm sure you can't. That's uh, we can't hear the applause, but everyone is just roaring with applause. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, that is amazing, especially for the not so great visual artists like me. Um, it makes me feel a little bit better to be able to see something that actually doesn't look that bad when I'm when I'm trying to draw. Um, so thank you. Um, next, we are going to uh, move on um, to Abby and she, Abby, you can share your screen yourself, I think, but if you need me to show any of your, your slide, just let me know. I'm definitely going to need you to show okay. the slide because I definitely do not have it pulled up. Gotcha. Just let me know when. I appreciate you. So, um, I'm going to start off with a poem first. And I have to shout out my mom because she's on this call. <laughs> and um, so is my longtime college friend who turned into a sister. Um, so hi, mom. Hi, Asia. And Tamara Thrasher. Um, I love, love, love her and Mo. Shout out to everybody. But I just had to give those specific shout outs. Um, so my mom approved of this poem. It may be triggering but she approved it and that's all that matters. <laughs> um, so the name of my poem is called, I Am What I Am. I don't give a damn about how my blackness makes you feel, how my blackness comes off intimidating, how my blackness may be insinuating a worthless, invigorating as if when I bleed, I don't bleed red though opposing may bleed blue and I don't give a damn that you don't see color. Know that when you see me, I see you. When you see me, sometimes I see fear. And when you see me, my thought automatically lingers. When you see me, my tone softens to portray less aggression. Yes, ma'am, no, sir. They said to be respectful. They said to be calm. They said to give eye contact. They say to do as told. They said to be honest but don't talk too much so as not to come off as a challenge. But I don't give a damn about these challenges. Constant battling me versus me. I am who I am. I show you what I want you to see. And I don't give a damn that you receive my passion as overzealous, my love as oversensitivity, my boundaries as infirm. My words are unwavering. My thoughts forever open-minded. Remember, I don't give a damn how my blackness makes you feel my blackness is the definition of beauty my blackness coincides with intelligence my blackness is faith my blackness is god my blackness is whole my blackness reiterates black excellence my blackness exemplifies black girl joy and i don't give a damn that my love for my blackness offends you that's on you aniki ani i am what I am and I will be what I will be and not for you, but for me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so if you would not mind sharing your screen, please, Jesse. So the name of this portion is called what's on the menu. So when you think of what's on the menu, typically you think of breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, so when you think of, when I ask what's on the menu and you hear breakfast, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. So what are some of the most pressing um, or important thoughts and or feelings that you're experiencing in this moment? When I speak about lunch, um, usually that's the meal that sustains you throughout the day when you're at work. Um, so what are you doing to sustain your peace, your happiness, and your overall well-being, um, your mind? What, what are you doing to sustain all of that? Um, and then when you think about dinner, um, you know, that's the last meal of the day. Sometimes it's hard to digest. Um, so when I mention what's on the dinner menu, what's still left to digest? What thoughts and or feelings still linger and or maybe unsettling for you? So... Um, right now we're going to work on our menu. You can choose to, um, write about either one of them or all of them. Um, it can be a poem, it can be a free write, 
whatever comes to mind, um, whether you're in the mood for breakfast right now, lunch and or dinner, or you're greedy like me and you just want to eat everything one time. <laughs> um, so we are going to take about four or five minutes just to do some writing um, and focus on what's on your menu. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So we will start to bring it back. Um, and what we're going to transition to now is to break out into smaller groups um, for maybe about like 10 to 12 minutes ish um, for everyone to share some of what's, what's on your menu. <laughs> um, so it's gonna be around five to six people in the group. Please know that um, we encourage everyone to share, but it's not required. And as Jesse mentioned in the beginning of this, um, the breakout rooms are not, rec are not recorded. Um, and that is a private safe space for you to openly share um, with other members of the group. So um, Jesse's gonna break everyone up again into groups of five to six. And by the ending of that, we're gonna come back and hopefully um, everyone share something on their menu because the goal at the end ending of this is to create a group menu. So pretty much just pulling a little bit off of everyone else's plate. Um, and then I'll ask someone at the end to kind of share the groups menu. So again, it can be a free write, a poem, whatever it is. Um, so Jesse, if you want to go on ahead. Love her so much. And I love it that she wrote this piece for Muse and Still I Rise. Um, 
and I'm going to need your help. I'm feeling uplifted after this. I don't know how many of you all are. So let's let the music move you. I want to see you moving in your seats. We'll get some clapping going. Let's let's raise the roof as we rise. Thanks so much, Charmaine. That, I can't believe it's eight o'clock with the amount of energy I have after listening to that song, I feel like. <laughs> um, so wonderful. Thank you so much, um, everyone, for participating. Thank you to our artists for joining us. Um, I would encourage everyone to leave a word or thought in the chat about how you're feeling after this evening. Um, it can be a word or a phrase, um, but I have so enjoyed seeing everyone's faces and spending this time feeling very together and um, very much in community with everyone. So thanks. And you can feel free to just close out um, whenever you're ready.